We are one adventure at a time. Dave, Carrie, and Rudolph. We are excited to start our third year of full-time living and traveling in our tiny home on wheels. Join us as we travel North America, exploring and sharing the beauty around us. Hi, I'm Dave with One Adventure at a Time. Today, we get to install Sumo Springs. So we have been hearing about these a lot for the last three years and are very curious to see what kind of difference they're gonna make in our van. Now we're gonna be swapping out the stock bump stops for the rear and also doing the front Sumo Springs. So stay with us till the end and see what kind of difference this makes for us. Now our van is super heavy. We built it out. It weighs 8,700 pounds. We've been all over the United States and it is riding extremely rough right now. So we are going to know right away if this makes any difference or not and we'll let you know at the end of the video if we can tell a difference and maybe a couple tips on how to easily install your own. The back of the vehicle of the Promaster has leaf springs and shocks and I have the shocks right here. But what I'm really curious about is how the Sumo Springs are gonna react by themselves. So I got Sumo Springs for the rear and for the front. And it is a little backwards to do the Sumo Springs before the shocks because I might have to adjust the spacer depending on how close the bump stops are to the metal. But I just, I gotta find out how they're gonna react by themselves. To do this job, it only takes very few tools so all i need is a hammer any kind of hammer will probably work this is a two pound hammer a screwdriver and some type of jack i'm using a bottle jack here you can use the jack that comes with your pro master no problem and then the sumo springs and the sumo springs come with loctite so this is going to be pretty quick Usually just a few taps with the hammer on the screwdriver will loosen it up to enough to where I can just spin it off with my hand, no problem. But this one has proved to be a lot more challenging. I was starting to get worried because one of the bump stops would not come off and we've got an appointment to be at the shop tomorrow at 7.30 so this is something that has to be done and to travel without a bump stop I don't know. I just Can we drive? We could drive, but I just don't think it'd be a good idea. But so I actually had to drill holes. This is what the bump stop should look like, which I ripped in half. And then this, I could only get, I couldn't, the screwdriver would not turn it. So I drilled holes in it and then was able to put the screwdriver actually inside and then turn this off. So you drilled holes all the way around all it. All the way around it, so I could just keep turning it. And that was after we used WD-40 and uh, corrosive remover? Yeah, so I had been working on this for about an hour and a half now. Just to get that off? Just for this one side. I've been able to do complete Sumo installs in oh. under an hour, all four tires. That was really smart thinking, Dave. <laughs> High five. High five. Ooh, I was getting worried. <laughs> Three quarters of an inch higher. So a little under an inch higher than we were. Okay. So we should notice a difference. At least Rudel should notice a difference. <laughs> the ride will be a lot smoother for Rudel. I hope. What I've learned so far, if you're dealing with a brand new vehicle, this is gonna be an easy experience because you have new struts, you have a light vehicle, and you're gonna have a lot of area exposed so you can get your hands in here and that really helps. But if you're working with an older vehicle like we are, that's probably the front struts are shot. There's not gonna be much exposed. And it's gonna be a little more difficult. Well, I found that works if I spread this out as much as possible when I put it on there. 
the lower channel is deeper, the higher channel is not so deep. So I'm gonna start with the bottom, get the bottom on the spring, and I'm gonna start at the edge, right over here on the edge, and just work the bottom on, and then use my thumb to press the top on, and then work my way around. And I notice that works rather well. And definitely spray it down with soapy water, clean it all up, make sure you jack it up off the ground, so that you have as much area exposed as you can. And it's on. You got it? Yep. Wow, that was hard. <laughs> that was easy. That was easy? <laughs> Compared to the last one. <laughs> so that's the last, the last spring? That's the last spring. Now I'm gonna come back by with these uh, wire ties and there are already holes in the spring. So I'm just gonna feed them through that spring and go around the top spring, tighten them up so they don't move out of there and then clip them off. And I'm pretty much gonna be doing this by feel. This is a simple install that nearly anybody can do. I did the rear and the front, but a lot of people, they just do the rear and that's gonna be super quick for you. Um, the rears cost $254 each and then the front cost $170. So this is fairly inexpensive if you compare this to getting new shocks in the rear and new struts in the front like we need to get. So this is gonna buy us time until we're able to replace these. So not even an hour down the road, we noticed a huge difference. The cornering, the cornering was better. And then when we started hitting bumps, we were getting a jolt because our front struts are shot. So we were getting a huge jolt. It was uncomfortable. These made a huge difference. So this is definitely gonna buy us the amount of time that we need before we get those front struts replaced. So if you have any kind of comments or concerns or questions about how to install these, please ask questions in the comments. I'd be happy to help and we will catch you next video. If you would like to support our channel, please consider becoming a patron or check out our new merchandise at oneadvancereatatime.com. We also have stickers available in our website store. Thank you for watching.